Hey, Creechy. Hey. Welcome to the PLT Podcast. <laughs> it's so amazing to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You've come in all the way from New York. Mm-hmm. How was your travel here to the UK? Um, it's been hectic. Uh, came from New York to Manchester. Then we went to with Umar to Dublin. How for was the party. that? Yeah. It was a lot of fun. It was short, but... Um, it was a nice pre-party to mm-hmm. tonight's party. <laughs> to tonight, yeah. to everyone listening, we've got the PLT staff party. Yes. With, of course, all of our family members coming in as well. Hence yes. Karuchi coming. So it's going to be wild. You've not been to a PLT work party before, have you? Like a Christmas party. I know you've no. attended a lot of the big launches. Events. Yeah. But this is your first, like, family party. Yeah, I'm excited wow. to see what you guys wow. are all about. I mean, I feel like you're <laughs> going to see some sights tonight. I'm telling you, like, honestly. Yeah. This is all going to change tonight. We're going to be on tables. Right. We won't be on a bed anymore. We are definitely going to be living it. it up. I feel like company parties are the best because, like, you guys see each other every day and it's yep. work and you have to focus. But now I think... I think tonight people are going to let their hair down and just oh, for go sure. crazy. Are you going to let your hair down? Yeah. Oh, I'm excited to see. <laughs> I'm excited. I've got to. <laughs> okay, Karuchi, so you're an actress known for your roles in The Claws and The Bay, to name a few. Mm-hmm. But I kind of want to get to know you a little bit better. So yes. take me to the beginning of how you first kind of started out in the acting kind of world. You were actually a celebrity stylist before, I was, weren't you? I was, several years ago. That was kind of my passion. Mm-hmm. And then I got into, you know, the high-profile relationship. Mm-hmm. And from there, I kind of, you know, with social media, I had a bit of a following. Mm-hmm. Um, and so after the relationship, I kind of was just like, well, you know, I've got these followers. And I could post all day and I could do like the fit tees and stuff, but you know, long-term, longevity-wise, like, what do I want to do for my career? Mm -hmm. So I did a very small role in this uh, horror film. I had, like, one line, um, and I was so nervous uh, and excited, but I had fun, Mm -hmm. and it was great, and from there I was just super intrigued, and it sparked interest for me. So from there I uh, started taking classes, um, uh, private classes, then group classes. I went on so many auditions. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of like low budget, um, low budget films and independent films and shows. Uh, And then I got claws. And you got claws. (laughs) And I mean, I'm gonna go on to that in a little bit because I'm so excited to talk about claws. Honestly, I can't wait. But back to being a celebrity stylist. So Mm -hmm. you actually worked in the Nordstrom, didn't you? I did. So before I became a stylist, Uh that's kind of where I started to get my feet wet or where my love of fashion kind of started. Yeah. Was um, I worked at, yeah, you guys have Nordstrom here? So this is why I'm saying this. To all of our UK (laughs) listeners, the Nordstrom is basically our Selfridges, I'd say. Exactly. Are we agreeing in the room? Everyone else is agreeing. So it's It's like, like a department store. Yeah, and it's with a, really a bunch nice of different store. yeah brands. And I worked in. Uh, I first started working in like the espresso bar, really, like the coffee shop. No way. Yeah, because I had previous. Ex- my first job when I was sixteen, um, I was a barista. A barista is um, somebody who makes coffee, uh-huh. pretty much. So I started the, at the e bar, and then um, I switched over to uh, the men's department. Okay. And from there, I just... And, and the way Nordstrom works, they want more of, like, a personal experience. Yeah. So it's kind of like personal shopping. You really work with the customers and That's you kind it, of style yeah. them. And I was like, oh, I really like this. Like, I like to put things together for men and, you know, so... Um, yeah, that's how it kind of started. I worked with, did you know who Logic is? Yes. The rapper? This is what I was going to say. Like, who are some of the biggest or the most memorable people you've worked with or dressed? Logic's Logic. massive, so yeah. wow. Yeah, back then, um, God, years and years ago. It's so crazy. Um, so, yeah, he was, like, one of my first clients. Wow. I did a few other photo shoots with some friends. Um, did you have any, like, funny stories or, like, memories from when you were a stylist? Like, any mishaps or... I think thinking back in hindsight, I was just such like being um, somebody who gets styled now yes. and who has a st- yes. who has stylist. I was so like uh, premature back then, you know, like even my <laughs> like the stuff that I had, it was just like, oh, my God, I was such a beginner. Yeah. But that's how it is. That's you how know it what is. I mean? Start somewhere, and yeah. Exactly. And it was still I did my job and I did it well enough. So. Yeah. And here you are. Now you're known for your own style, though. Yeah. So, like, New York Fashion Week is a big thing. 
this year you killed it. I mean, Thank you. I think there was a picture that I remember. I think you're in a tan skirt, a white shirt, and these boots, and you were sat on a sofa with these sunglasses. And I swear to God, yeah. that picture <laughs> must have been regrammed on everybody's yeah. story at least a million times. It went on mine. Yeah. I was like, oh no, she did. Like honestly, like we were in New York at the time, and I remember seeing you like Karuchi's about, and she is she's wearing this outfit, and I'm just like, oh my god. But this is the thing you're known for your style now. Like how incredible that you've become that person from being a stylist yourself to being the style right uh i think it's amazing yeah i think it's fun i love i love fashion week so much you get to just have fun and 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 probably wear things you normally wouldn't wear i mean Mm. that outfit you could wear it out but it's a little bit it was like a super high slit and very revealing so I might wear that to like, you know, a certain occasion, Mm -hmm. but you know, fashion week is when you can just wear whatever and have fun and look good. And I love making it my own. Yeah. You know, I think that's, that's the best part about fashion um, is, is understanding for me, understanding what works for me, what Mm -hmm. doesn't. We're small. So, you know, body types, we like, I like cropped. So Mm -hmm. it makes, it gives me some shape because we're so small, (laughs) you know? Um, So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's just about creating what's good for you. On the note of, right, so I'm five foot one. How tall are you? Same. Same. Mm-hmm. We're literally the same size. This is amazing. <laughs> like I've met my my sister. Right. I feel like I've met my sister in life and what an amazing sister to I'm have. the US version. <laughs> you are the US version. <laughs> the most, imp- the better version for sure. Now on the note of your styling and you know how big you're into fashion, mm-hmm. could we see anything exciting coming in the future with PLT? Maybe in 2020? Potentially. <laughs> yeah. 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 We are. Uh, can we talk about it? We can talk a little bit. Okay. We can't give away too much. Okay. We're gonna um, tease. Yeah. Just a little tease. There is something coming. It's okay. been a while. I've known Umar for years and yeah. it's taken a while and taken time for us to kind of get together and figure something out. Oh, I as mean, I've been as, waiting for it. As far as, you know, doing a collaboration <laughs> and we've kind of, we finally come to that point. So we've got something really fun um, and something very empowering. Ooh. Yeah. I'm And excited. inspiring and very feminine. And be on the lookout. It's going to be great. It's very genuine to me. Something that I really involve my life around. So yeah, next year. <laughs> next year, 2020. <laughs> Do you know what? I know it because it's you. I just know it's going to be incredible. And with PLT, what an amazing club it's going to be. I mean, it's perfect. Fire. And like... I mean, PLT just has its own fan base as it is. And I love how affordable PLT Mm. is because I think it's important to like reach the masses and reach, you know, everybody across the world really um, for them to be able to afford um, Mm. the clothes and to be able to afford to look good, you know. So I think that also is very important, um, you know, in which I love. You were actually one of the first girls I think PLT engaged with when stepping into the US all those years ago. Yeah. So it's kind of an obvious decision. Yeah. And like I said, it took a long time to kind of really do something mm-hmm. together. But I've always been, you know, family to, to PLT. Okay. And since then, you've made a huge name for yourself in series like Claws and The Bay, which we spoke about before. I'm going to speak a little bit more about. But did you always want to be an actress? No. I heard you studied graphic design. I did. I went to community college... Um, for about a year and a half for graphic design. Wow. And then life just kind of happened and I stopped going. Um, but no, I, I didn't, I was always kind of like shy and reserved as a child a little bit. So I didn't expect to like ever become some sort of, you know, actor mm. or artist or anything of that sort. Um, so it's so interesting sometimes when I think about it, like I'm an actor, like it's, wild so (laughs) how did it all happen like how did you first get you said you first got that job Mm -hmm. and you know you were nervous but how did it actually happen yeah well I started working with a manager and he uh kind of was just like have you ever acted before Mm -hmm. and I was like no but I mean I'll try it it doesn't hurt to try and if Mm. it doesn't work then at least I tried you know and then that's when I did the role and I was like okay like I I think I can do this Mm -hmm. but it is you know it's a lot of work and a lot of time yeah. that you have to, time and effort that you have to 
put into it mm. and a lot of the, my beginning years of acting I put a lot of that time in to just kind of like focus mm. and perfect you know my craft yeah because it's a real craft isn't it you can't just kind of pick it up and I mean obviously no. people have it natural and you have a lot of natural talent but you have to work on it don't oh, you? oh 100% and because I mean you know I'm up against just people in the acting world in general there's mm. people who have been acting since they were children you know, they've been in drama, especially in Hollywood, theater, Broadway. Yeah, you know, it's Hollywood. So, yeah, so you know, just imagine mm. starting your career at, career at such a young age mm. and how you develop your talent. You know, yeah. think about Leonardo when he when he did Titanic and he was so young. Oh From then God. till now, he's done so much, um, and he's just a great actor. Period. But yeah. you know that experience and you grow. Exactly. Um, so I mean, I'm in about like my. Um, mm sixth year I think fifth or sixth year of acting wow. so you know I've got a decent resume mm -hmm. um, but I still even still being on claws and even the things that I've done so far yeah I still have so much more to go and so much more to learn and so tell me about your first big job. I think your first lead role was a movie with a three-headed shark. Oh gosh. Tell me yes. about this movie. This was my first lead role. Uh-huh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually seen the three-headed shark. Do you know what? Oh, when I God. first read about it, I heard you um, in an interview talk about it. I thought, God, what is this three-headed shark going to look like? But I saw it and I was like, this is really what? my production. Yeah. It was a good first lead film. Yeah, I mean, it was it was decent enough. It, it you know, it's very CGI where yeah. they use, like, the, the animation and stuff. Uh -huh. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah looking <laughs> so back, like... Memory. Yeah, and, and there's such a huge fan base for, like, Shark Week and shark movies and yeah. shark shows shows mm -hmm. so people are really engaged and people really liked it and amazing uh i think it's on netflix yeah 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 no that's where i saw it yeah on netflix. so I it's like it. it's I'm you know go watch it. can't be that bad <laughs> if it's on netflix you know <laughs> but yeah that you know it's that's me as an actor yeah. getting my feet wet and you know you gotta start somewhere literally so. yeah literally, right 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 oh my god i remember when i was shooting that in pensacola florida and I think it was in like January or something like that. And I had to get in the water and it was freezing. Stop. I didn't know the water got cold in Florida. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Because it's like northern. So it's not like uh, southern where like Miami and stuff is. Right. Okay. So yeah, but it was cold. So. <laughs> yeah. I was dying. And I don't like to be cold. <laughs> no, I am exactly the same. I feel you. Yeah. So that's led to the job you're in now, the, the big job clause. Tell me a little bit about Claws. I mean, everything in between as well. Tell yeah. me kind of how you got from where you were there to where you are now. Yeah, I mean, I did Three Headed Shark Attack, The Bay. Mm -hmm, the Bay. I did One Night Only. I did Dinner with the Family. No. Shoot. Literally, There's my memory. I told Karuchi's you. I'm looking at a CV right now, like in her head. Like, I know. I have seen your IMDb page. Did there was a lot in between. Dinner with the Family. No. Weekend with the family. Weekend with the family. Mm -hmm. oh, God. <laughs> um, what else have I done? I did. There was this show, this TV series called Single Ladies. Yeah. So a lot. Yeah, a lot here and there. Claws uh, has been the biggest production that I've been a part of. Yeah. And biggest role. And it's just been amazing. You it know, looks it's like been so much fun. Oh my God, I get to live out like my ratchet dreams. <laughs> like my character Virginia is so much fun. The fans love her. Yeah. We've got, uh, we're three seasons in, and we're going into our fourth and final in January. How exciting. Fourth and final. Fourth and <gasps> final. Oh, my word. So for anyone in the UK that hasn't seen Claws, because it is a US program, I think it's on TNT, isn't it? It's on TNT, but I, you guys have Hulu here? We have Hulu. Yeah, so I think it's on. Stream it on there. Yeah, it's okay, on so Hulu. Okay, so you can stream on Hulu, but for yeah. anyone that hasn't watched it yet, mm -hmm. you need to go and watch it now. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the show and a little bit about your character, Virginia. Yes, so Claus is about five manicurists mm -hmm. in Southern Florida who work in this nail salon. The show pretty much is based around this nail salon, but within the nail salon, there's drugs, sex, crime, all this crazy stuff happening. It's a very wild and bold and colorful mm -hmm. show. Um, there's nothing like it out there right no, now. No, there isn't. Yeah. And what about Virginia? So tell us about Virginia. Oh, Virginia, Are that's there right. Are any that's similarities right. between you and Virginia? Because uh, she is a character. Duh, I love her. Yeah, she's fun. I, me, Karuchi, I, I've got a little bit of ratchet in me, but Virginia, I'm like able to like really just let it out. Yeah. And she's very, I love playing her. She's very like particular. When I'm in character, it's just like, 
I wear a blonde wig. So once I get the wig on and I got the nails on and like the hand movements and everything, I just really, you know, become Mm -hmm. her. Um, But she is an ex stripper. Okay. So she comes from the stripping world, comes from like a broken home, always wanted, you know, to be loved and Mm -hmm. to be a part of something, um, which is why she gets, she becomes um, so. She wants to be a part of this group of women. Yeah. You know, she's the youngest one of the group. She's the millennial. She's like the little bit slow sometimes, <laughs> but that's just how she is, you know. <laughs> and I think, you know, as as colorful and as bright and bold as the show is and like wild, there's like always like wild things happening. Mm-hmm. You know, we have these very grounding moments where it's, you know, like Virginia, she just wants to be loved and, and wants yeah. to be a part of a family and a group because growing up, she didn't really have her mom. And and moments like that, you know, it's like, it, it really connects with the audience. Yeah. Um, and which is, I think, why people really, really love the show mm-hmm. as well. And then she dates an autistic um, man, okay. which is... You know, usually, not that it's unheard of, but on TV, you don't really see that, Mm. you know? And so that's another great thing about Claws is, like, we open up these doors to different storylines that aren't aren't shown on TV as much. much. Exactly, (laughs) but there are many autistic people out there in the world, Mm -hmm. you know? And I've had people who, um, who have autistic family members or or like sons or daughters and they're like literally in tears they're like you know I love your character so much in the show because like my brother or my son is autistic and it just you know I can relate and blah 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 so it's like moments like that it's like this show is fucking crazy yeah. but <laughs> it's still it's still very heartfelt mm, it's got a lot of meaning to it in, in parts as well exactly and each girl has their own kind of thing or issue or just situation that again might not always be you know shown on tv but Mm. it is somebody's reality yeah and it's relatable exactly yeah okay well so if you haven't seen claws go and watch it i mean better (laughs) is a character like i say so you need to go and check that out because she's fantastic now you mentioned that you suffer from like memory loss well i mean i say suffer from memory loss i mean that your memory's not great i mean my memory's not great either but how on earth do you remember all your lines for your show when you don't have a great memory, like you say. It's weird how, like, my memory is so bad, but I think it's just training your brain after yeah. a while to just memorize the lines, but also you're not supposed to... They tell you a lot of times to not get stuck in the words because yeah. when you're in scene, then it's kind of like you're just you're just saying the words that are on the script mm-hmm, mm-hmm. opposed to, like bringing out emotion so for me before when I first started I would have I would like try and try and remember line for line each word but then I had to let that go because I wasn't evoking emotion Mm -hmm. you know so now what I do is kind of just like let all that go and then understand what's happening in the in the scene in the situation where we're at how I feel what do I think about whatever somebody's saying or whatever it is Mm -hmm. and then kind of remember what's what the lines are, and then that helps me remember the lines as well, yeah. you know? Um, so, yeah, it's all a process, <laughs> and again, it's like as you go, you grow and you learn. Yeah, just experience. Yeah. Now, you've clearly worked really hard to get to where you are, but how do you think your perception has changed of the industry now that you're in it? Do you think it's changed at all? So when I first started, I, you know, was in – well, how I became – known to the world I guess was Mm. you know being in a high profile relationship and so I was pretty much that was the perception of me was that situation and things that were happening during that relationship and was very public and things were being said that were true and were not true and you know the way social media is Mm -hmm. or the media they uh can be very uh controlling not controlling but like people will believe what they read you know so for a while i think people had a certain perception of me or just didn't really know who i was but just kind of associated me with whatever i was involved in at the time yeah and then when i got claws is when people really started to uh take me serious and people really understood that I was really trying to um, trying to do something with my career and become an actor. Mm. Mm. And you've obviously 
been through a lot of moments where the press have been on you over the past few years mm -hmm. and even been hounded by the paparazzi. I mean, I've seen some videos on YouTube where you're literally just being followed in the street when you're trying to get like a parking ticket for your car and things. Yeah. It's like, how have you learned to deal with that? Because that's surely got to be a lot to take. I mean, I remember one time I lived when I was in L LA and mm -hmm. I, I lived in this area where it's kind of like, uh, it's like a popular area or whatever. And I went to go walk my dog at like 7 a.m. And there's paparazzi outside my house. And I'm like, it's 7 a.m. I have like <laughs> absolutely nothing on my face. I've got sleepy, puffy face and I like threw whatever on. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, like Jesus Christ. So yeah, I've, I mean, I've gotten all of it. People who have followed me in the car, yeah. I'll be at a random restaurant or something and mm. paparazzi knows. I don't know if people are tipping them off mm. or what it is, you know, but in LA, paparazzi is like a big thing. Yeah, it yeah. really is. There's a video of you on YouTube. I don't know whether you're aware, but you're in the nail salon. I think you're getting a pedicure. And I think the title is like Karuchi is shocked or get some shocking that was, information. That was recently. I didn't what even was that? know. Like, I could I... tell you didn't know. You didn't look like you didn't look at the camera once and this camera is zooming yeah. in. And I'm like, this is uncomfortable for me to yeah. watch. Never mind like right. you knowing that's happening to you or no, even not knowing and then finding out. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I mean, I was going to a nail shop that I always go to. <laughs> and again, where it's, I was on Melrose, which is a pretty, you know, popular street, yeah. I guess. Um, so I don't know if they, I guess they just, maybe they were driving past and they saw me walk in or I don't know, like I have no idea. <laughs> and I didn't even see them afterwards, you know, sometimes no. like they'll wait till you leave and then they'll snap photos and I'm like, okay, blah, blah, blah. But I didn't know till like a week later, that's when they posted the, the, the footage yeah. and I was like, oh my gosh, like good thing I wasn't like picking my nose yeah. or like, <laughs> you, you know, anything. doing something like weird and <laughs> yeah, it's. I guess you just get used to it. <laughs> and are any of your family in the industry as well? Or have they just kind of had to adjust to you being famous? They've had to adjust, yeah. Nobody is um, in the industry. So how did they, like, how have they dealt with it? Is it been an easy sort of transition for them or do they still struggle with it? Because I guess it's pretty wild. Yeah, I think in the beginning, it was tough for them to like understand. Mm. And then with the media, putting out certain stories and saying certain things and people saying th things and this perception of me, yeah. I think was hard for them because they know me as a different person. Mm. You know, they know, they know, they the know me the truth and who I really am and they've known me all my life. So I think at the beginning it was tough, but after a while they, they you know, they got adjusted to it. And now, now they're used to when we go out and people ask for pictures, they kind of just like, they don't, before it was just kind of like, they didn't really know, you know, because they were never <laughs> no exposed to, do, to that. Yeah. They felt like weird or felt like people were like invading my space. Um, so now they just kind of like chill and it's, I guess, kind of normal. <laughs> and how do you deal with it when people do come and kind of invade your space? So if you're out for like a family meal and paparazzi or a fan wants to take a picture with you, are you okay with that? Like, yeah, more like 99% of the time I'll do it. Mm -hmm. Just because, like, if I don't, then it's like, oh, she's a bitch. <laughs> Makes da, 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 da. A thing, yeah. You know, I'm just like, just take the photo and fine. <laughs> but I've had people literally at, at a restaurant, I'm like, biting, I, you know, going for a bite. <laughs> and they're like, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't want to bug you. I normally don't do this. Lady, <laughs> like, I'm putting, literally, I'm literally like biting my food. And it's like, <laughs> you want to take a photo? Cool, but like at least wait till you can see you what I'm doing. Eating, wait till yeah, I'm finished, or why did you wait till I'm eating my food and then I gotta <laughs> stop and I gotta fix my teeth? And then, you know, it's just like. Just makes it a whole thing. Then. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, God. But then I'm like, mm, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> still say yeah. Yeah. You're still that nice guy. Yeah. I think yes the other day, where was I? It was really early, and I, I had, I think I just finished working out, and I had like nothing on my face, and I looked like I just woke up and puffy and everything. I mean, and I'm I think sure somebody... you still look amazing when you've got nothing on your face. Oh like, no, it was in the your morning. Face is literally caught by <laughs> angels in the airport. It was very early, and I right. was just like, I totally would, but I look wild. And I think they kind of knew it's like it's early, That's and I'm it. just like, like you know. And I think some that. sometimes. Those that like morning airports are like the ex exceptions of where I'll like 
be like, look, look at my face right now. Like, I look so <laughs> dead tired. You're just so, traveling yeah. and you want to do your thing. Uh, yeah, I just want to, like... I appreciate that. <laughs> no, Hi. Aside from, I can get that. Like, no one wants to be seen in an airport when they're traveling. No yeah, one. Yeah, like, nobody will even recognize me anyway, so... <laughs> I'm sure they will. No, aside from Hollywood and, you know, the drama of the press, you've also got a YouTube channel. I do. So what made you decide to create a YouTube channel when you did all those years ago? Um, I think I was just trying to connect with my fans. Mm-hmm. YouTube is such... I'm 31. And Are so you? I am. I'm old, girl. <laughs> Do you know what? I was thinking this morning. I was like, I'm going to... You're not old at all. But I was like, I need to check what age Karuchi is. Because I was like, I'm sure she's going to be younger than me. No, I'm 31. How well, I'm 27. So we're like the same age. Hey, we're the same. A little bit, yeah. But you look like 19, yeah. so it's fine. Right. <laughs> um, but, you know, YouTube is huge huge yeah it's like the biggest market right now you know I wanted to connect with my my fans some more so I wanted to to do more of like a lifestyle YouTube of just getting ready and this and that I don't post as much because you know with YouTubers it's like most of them that's their job that's that's their their career so they have 24 7 to like do the lights and this and that and they know how to edit and all this stuff and I've learned to do a few things but it's a lot it's a whole work. job it's a whole job and even like blogging or vlogging mm. i went on this trip one time with all these vloggers i remember seeing it <laughs> with style hall yeah. and all these great vloggers and youtubers and they had their cameras and the, all the girls every morning it's just like hi good morning and da-da-da, we're doing this and i was just like <laughs> hi good morning like, you know i'm like trying to like trying to fit trying in to and trying to like you know yeah get my content up but I'm like oh this is like I don't know it's just like that part of it is not really me yeah you know like I like to show the world a different side of me and like my fun side yeah but it's hard to have like to have a camera in your face all the time mm-hmm. I'm working on it though I, I have some people um I'm working on some things to kind of like read not revamp my YouTube but just to get it going some more so there could be a little comeback yeah soon. but okay. still more genuine not yeah. too forced so there's a video on there of you and Kylie Jenner cooking shrimp yeah so tacos. tell me like shrimp tacos like how did this happen and are, like are you into cooking is cooking like a big thing for you yeah i love to cook shrimp tacos is like my specialty i have seen actually <laughs> so when you look there's like one two three maybe four videos on on ta- tacos alone so i'm yeah. like okay she really likes tacos yeah guys. anyone wants to send karuchi some food it's definitely tacos, be tacos. right <laughs> and um i don't know i think kylie like she wanted to collaborate and she messaged me on either just doing a video or mm. she recommended cooking i forget it was years ago i forget yeah. what it was but anyways we got together i yeah i showed her how to i do my shrimp tacos and they're actually really good I and i to see try. even to this day i mean it was maybe three however many years ago yeah, but yeah. even to this day people still watch that video i know well and they're like i cooked karuchi and Kylie's shrimp tacos tonight and they were delicious so yeah I should do more cooking tutorials I think so like cooking and like I guess healthy eating is that like a big thing for you as well yeah I don't cook as much because I travel a lot Mm. it's usually just me at home and cooking for one is like not fun at all because you either cook too much or not enough and then like yeah so yeah I like to cook but I don't do it often. And talking about friends in the industry, so do you have like a circle of celeb friends and then a circle of non-celeb friends? Like what's the kind of mix up like? Um, Being in LA, I think I have a group of friends that I've known since high school. Wow. And we have a tight-knit group of of friends. and we all just like love each other because we all know how each other is and yeah. like have known each other before, you know, my success or each mm. other's success, you know. But the industry is like big but small. Yeah. So like even my my friends from high school, they might not be as famous, let's say, mm-hmm. but they still know people. They're still in the industry. I feel like in LA, everybody is somebody. So everybody kind of just either hangs out or they just communicate or whatever it is. Mm. Um, so it's just like one big group of everybody. Bigger <laughs> celebrities, smaller, you know, it's just everyone kind of Everyone's knows got everyone. their own thing going on. Yeah. Now, we can't talk about relationships without, of course, mentioning your new man, Victor Cruz. Well, I say new man, without your man, yes. Victor Cruz. Tell us a little bit about you two. How did you guys meet? Is there like a romantic story? Um, we've known each other for a couple of years, okay. like through friends and in passing and seeing each other at events. It's going on just 
a little over two years. Wow. And two years ago, he had his birthday in L.A. Mm -hmm. and he invited me. So I went and then we went out afterwards. And I actually took us. He, he hates the story. But I actually <laughs> took us on our first date. Really? Yeah, we went to this. There's this place in L.A. where they do dinner and a movie. Oh, Yeah, nice. and I wanted to go with the guy because it's like a cute date thing, you know? Yeah. So I was like, do you want to come? <laughs> so we ended up going and it was fun. And ever since then, we just kind of like built our relationship till now. Wow. Yeah, so it's been over two years. So it might be a silly question. Yeah. But is he the one? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I mean, I do see myself, I, I would marry him. Yeah. Um, but we both understand, like, we need to take our time. There's mm. no rush. You know, he's a really great guy. He's super sweet. We get along so well. Mm. We have fun together. I think you really learn about someone when you travel with them. Yeah. And we travel to so many places and we just like, we're just like two peas in a pod. You know what I mean? Like we just, we just have fun. And I, I find all these things to do um, in whatever city that we're in and we just do it and we have fun. And so do you ever talk about like marriage or babies or is that not kind of like on the cards yet? Um, everybody is like, <laughs> when everybody are you asks guys this question. <laughs> getting married? When are you guys having babies? And we're just like, oh. I guess we're just trying to have fun yeah well. and I you know at 31 it's like you kind of see life differently and mm. I think when you're younger like when I was in high school I'm like okay by 25 I'm gonna get married I'm gonna have two kids and now mm -hmm. I'm like girl please <laughs> <laughs> so I I am in no rush yeah you know marriage is just a title in a sense you know like we're very good where we're at my career, thankfully, is is going down the right path. Yeah. And I want to just continue to work on my career, work on myself, work on us. And then from there, everything will kind of just, you know, Come fall naturally. into place. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. Do you find it hard being in a relationship that is so in the public eye that's commented on by the world? Because I know that that's something you've been through before. Mm -hmm. um, and now, do you have the same kind of struggle at all? Like, is it hard? Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, uh, not as um, much of a bigger scale as it was before my yeah. previous relationship. Mm. But I mean, still people pry into our lives, mm. you know, and yeah, it's it's tough because you have to kind of like weed those people out in the media and this and that. Um, but I think we do a good job of like communicating. I think that's what's important is mm. us, me and him communicating with each other so we can understand one another and not allow any outside sources or people or anything to kind of, you know, mess with our perception or mm. just our feelings toward mm -hmm. one another. And how does it affect you if somebody does like comment on your relationship, whether it be in the media or on Instagram or on social media? Like, how do you process and go through that? I always, I see everything and I hear everything. Mm. I think it's just whether I allow it to affect me. And more times than none, I don't let it affect me because it's Good. like... You can't let people judge your relationship yeah. or, you know, you just, you, like I said, you have to, a, a relationship is between two people and it should be strictly that. So that's the message there, just you guys. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. excited to see what comes for you two. Yeah, who knows? I don't know. Like, I, I never thought I'd be in this <laughs> situation yeah, yeah. for, you know, like I said, over two years, but who knows? We'll see. <laughs> well, I'm sure whatever happens with you, with the future, with you guys, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be incredible. Yeah. So we've spoken so much about your career, like kind of how you've got to where you are now and even your relationship. But what's next for you in 2020? What's coming up that you can tell us about? Um, so Claus is going again in its fourth and final season. Mm -hmm. So we'll do that and finish that up. We shoot that in New Orleans. Oh, and, is um, it? Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. In Louisiana. So that takes up about like, five months of my wow. life yeah wow um i've also been shooting a show called deputy okay that's on fox i don't know if you guys have that yeah idea. i think we can i think we can get fox yeah. probably yeah I you like can fox. like stream anything mm, nowadays that's it. we just got to find a way <laughs> right um that show comes out january i have oh, a smaller wow. role but still a great role and a little collaboration mm. a little fashion collaboration a little summit summit with summit. yeah and then 
I don't know. You know, uh, the way that the industry is, it's one minute you can be doing this or that or yeah. an opportunity comes. And for me, I'm ready for it all. And I'm ready to just take my career to the next level. You know, Claws has been great to me. I love Claws so much. But now I'm really ready to um, break down those barriers of just tapping into a new, a new level of me being an actor, I guess, if that makes sense to you. It yeah. makes sense. I'm really excited and I'm sure everybody listening is excited to see what kind of comes next for you in that world and mm-hmm. just in general because whatever you do is going to be incredible and very, very exciting. Thank you. Karuji, it's been amazing having you getting to know <laughs> getting to know you today on, on the bed, on the PLT bed. Thanks for getting in your PJs and coming Girl, and chilling with so me. Girl, so cozy. I'm like, where did you sleep? <laughs> I know, we'll have a little nap now. But before we do, we've got a little game that we like to play sometimes at the end of a podcast called Dare or Dare. Do you think you're up for it? Let's do it. (laughs) (laughs) I I wasn't sure then whether that was going to be a yes. So guys watching on YouTube, if you would like to hear this exclusive part of our podcast, you will need to click the link below and head over to iTunes where you can hear the exclusive content of Dare or Dare.